Jesus. Just worship with us as we minister. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If it wasn't for the Lord, where would I be? My life was nothing until he sets me free. What a chance.
pressing on the upward way, new heights I'm gaining. Praying as I more word found. So Jesus plant my feet oh, on higher, oh, higher ground. Pressing oh, 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 the upward way, new heights I'm gaining every day. Still praying. Jesus blood my feet oh. Heavenly Father please let my feet oh. I need to see your face so plant my feet oh. on higher Jesus, I need 
me a cheat. I have the comfort. Lift me a cheat. A brand new touch. A brand new walk. A brand new sacrifice. A brand new prayer. Just lift me a cheat. Lift me a cheat. Shout with the voice of triumph. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. What a change. There are so many wonderful things about Jesus. He's the on-time God. He's the friend that's sticking closer than a brother. He's the bishop of our souls. He's the captain of our salvation. He's our rock in a weary land. And this same Jesus has become our salvation. And we're so grateful above all else. He is our salvation. Can we just lift our hands and wave it unto him? Our Savior, our Holy Redeemer. Our rock, our strong tower. The one who keeps and provides. The one who sustains. This same Jesus, praise God, praise God. We believe God, and we're believing God even now through faith. That as the minister of his word comes, that he will speak to his people. In the name of the Lord, Pastor Daly, will you come, sir, and minister as you are led of the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Wonderful Jesus. Wonderful Jesus. You are Lord. You are God. Savior. Deliverer. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. We have been enjoying the presence of the Lord. What a great presence of God. Amen. Just before I read the scripture and I ask us to sit at just a few moments to declare something, just before I do that, it says, just a verse, love, wonderful love, the love of God to me. There are some folks here this morning that you don't even realize how much God loves you. There are some visitors in the house this morning you don't realize how much and how deep the love of god goes in so far as you're concerned but we want to tell you this morning that jesus loves you amen and so just a time or so love wonderful love we are declaring it to you god loves you in spite of whatever it is that is happening to you jesus loves you and we just want to sing it amen and just to continue to allow for the presence of the lord to flow in the house Amen this morning. Can we sing that chorus? Love, love wonderful love. love. The, love the love of God, God to me.
praise God. Praise God. I'm reading to us from the book of St. Matthew, chapter 14. And I read a couple of verses from 22 to about 28 or so. Praise God. And straightway, Jesus constrained his disciples to go into a ship and to go before him unto the other side while he sent the multitudes away. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up into a mountain apart to pray. And when the evening was come, he was there alone. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with the waves, for the wind was contrary. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them, walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit. And they cried out for fear. But straightway Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I. Be not afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. And he said, Come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. Verse 32. And when they were come into the ship, the wind ceased. Praise God. Deacon Daly, you want to pray? Okay, let us bow our heads. Father, we thank you for your love. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you, God, for this word, this bread, God, that you're about to break to us. Lord, we lift our hearts to you. We pray, God, that you will prepare our hearts to receive that which you have to give us. We pray, Lord Jesus, that you will remove the devourer from our midst. Lord, he which seeks to snatch the word that will be delivered. We pray that you will send forth this word with power and anointing and authority. That it will accomplish that which you would. We pray that every heart will be ministered to. Even the unsaved. Lord, let your perfect will be done. Anoint the speaker. Lord, give him a special anointing. From the very crown of his head to the sole of his feet. Lord, cause him to speak as of the living oracles of God. And accomplish your will today as we give you thanks. In Jesus' name. Praise God. Can we praise the Lord, everybody? Come on, we praise the Lord, everybody. Can we praise the Lord again? Can we clap our hands to the King? Worship the one that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood and has made many of us in the house today kings and priests brought us from a mighty long way oh praise the lord it is important that we understand that jesus loves us i want to tell somebody in the house this morning that jesus loves you you might be in a situation right now where you are questioning the love of God because of what is happening to you in that particular situation. Things might be going topsy-turvy, so to speak. Things might be happening and spinning out of control. And it is as if you are losing grip of your life. It is as if... Uh, you are losing control of the things that you are supposed to be in control of. And as a result, the 
top is at the bottom and the things that should be standing are on the ground and it would seem that your friends have somehow separated themselves from you it would appear that those who are close and should be giving some support and extending a lifeline it would seem as if the support is not forthcoming and the lifeline has been withheld and you are all alone and so you turn and say is there a god why do i feel this way and you might even be aware that there is a God, but you wonder if God loves you or if God cares about you because the situation is so bad in your life. But I want to declare to somebody in the house right now that Jesus loves you in spite of your situation, in spite of the storms in your life. Jesus wants you to know that he loves you and that he cares. Oh, can we praise the Lord? If you are a child of God, Jesus loves you. If you are a backslider in the house, he wants to marry to the backslider. If you are an unsaved in the house, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him, whether you are bad way down to the gutters, it doesn't matter what you have done. It doesn't matter how far you have gone and delved into sin. I want you to understand that Jesus loves you. Oh, can we praise the Lord? Oh, love of God, the songwriter says, so rich and pure. How measureless and strong. His love is so strong. His love is so deep. His love is so wide. The song says, wide, wide as the ocean. High as the heavens above, deep, deep as the deepest sea, is my Savior's love. I don't know and I don't care what you're going through. I don't know what kind of a wedge is placed in your life. But I know that the Lord God Almighty has instructed that you hear and understand that he loves you. Don't look at what is happening to you. I love you, said the Lord. Don't look at what is turning upside down in your life. I love you, and I'm there. When you don't see me, I am there. When you can't feel me, I am there, because there is nowhere where I am not. And I am touched with the feelings of your infirmities. I want you to know that I'm feeling, and I'm sensing, and I'm aware of what you're going through. But you just hold on in there, because you're in the place today for a reason. There is a word that will come. There is a word that will reach you. And if you dare to open your heart, if you dare to open your life, the God of gods, the King of kings, is going to show up in your situation. And you're going to realize that God loves you. Oh, can we praise the Lord? Lord. He loves you with an everlasting love. He loves you in spite of your situation. Oh, can we praise the Lord? Can we praise the Lord? Some folks believe that God only loved the saints, but it is not only the saints that he loved. He loved the answer. He loved the sinner. Not the sin, but the sinner. He is doing everything to pull the sinner from your life of sin and bring you into a better experience. Oh, can we praise the Lord? He loves you, he loves you, he loves you. He loves you, he loves you, he loves you. There are some folks that are here this morning. Amen. Our sister asks those that were here on watch night, and some of you were here on watch night, and you are here again this morning. I feel especially compelled to tell you that God loves you. You are here for a reason. You are here to find something more. There is something that got a grip, got a, got a hold of your life for the past couple of days and weeks. And you came to church Tuesday night. And then you are here again today. And you are searching. You are searching. You are feeling in the darkness. You are not even sure what you are searching for. But you know that there is an 
emptiness. You recognize that there is a void. You know that something is missing. You know that something is lacking. And you are in the house this morning. But I want to tell you, though you don't know it, what is missing in your life is the Holy Ghost and fire. God's presence himself. What is absent from, absent from your life is the presence of Almighty God. It is not a house that you need. It is not a job that you need. You, yes, we will need that in a while. But that's not the most important thing right now. It doesn't matter what you're going through. The things that have surrounded you while they are trying and while they are hard and while it makes life difficult. The thing that really is mean Meaningful to you today is the fact that you need God Almighty in your situation. Oh, can we praise the Lord? Can we praise the Lord? If in the midst of what you're going through, you get blessed with a house, you will have a house and you will be miserable in the house. If in the midst of what you're going through, God, you get blessed with a car, you will be driving a car but you will be a miserable driver. It's not the things that you need. It is God Almighty. You, when you get him, when you have him, even if you don't have the house, you will be comfortable. You will be calm. You will rejoice. I know folks without a house. I know folks without cars. And I know folks without those things who have Jesus. And though they are, these things are absent in their lives, they are happy. Though these things are absent in their lives, they are rejoicing. Though these things are not there, they get up in the morning and say, thank you for one more morning. Thank you for one more day. Thank you for one more opportunity to praise you. Oh, praise be to God. Praise be to God. So life does not consist in the abundance of the things that we have have. It's not the things that you have. Men have a tendency to look at you and judge you and determine your success by virtue of what you have. But success is not determined by what you have. It is determined by who you have. It's not the car and the house and the land, but it is the Jesus, the son of the living God. It is God Almighty. So give me Jesus in the morning. You can have the whole world, but give me Jesus. Oh, praise the Lord. Take my car. Take my house. Take my land. Take my bank book. Take everything. Not that you would get anything with the bank book, but take it still. Take it. And if I have a choice, I, I just hand it to you without a fight. But don't come tell me, give me your Jesus. We're going to war. Because Jesus makes the difference in my life. If it wasn't for him, I wouldn't be here this morning. If it wasn't for him, I would be most miserable. If it wasn't for him, because there was a time when I lost my house. There was a time when I lost my car. There was a time when I lost my job. There was a time when I lost my business. There was a time when I had no money. There was a time when I had no furniture. That went to but then I still had Jesus so I woke up the next morning and said honey look where we are now children look where we are now no space around us in a little place but then there was something down inside of me telling me go on so the Holy Ghost was down inside of me the, the, the bank the bank couldn't take the Holy Ghost The bailiff couldn't take the Holy Ghost. Go on with the car, but leave Jesus with me. Go on with the house, but leave Jesus with me. And when you have Jesus, my God, after you go through tonight and tomorrow and the other day and the other week, and you love him still, and you worship him still, and you lift him up still, and you glorify him still, there is something about this God. He is going to see your faithfulness. And one thing about God, he is not going to leave us just like that. He has a way to restore. He has a way to revive. He has a way to renew. He has a way to lift us up again. 
Oh, glory to God. If you have Jesus and you are down, don't worry. Look out tomorrow. I'm going to be coming up. Even if it's on the rough side of the mountain, I'm going to be coming up. Even if it's on the rough parts of the desert, I'm going to be coming up. Because Jesus makes the difference. It's Jesus that you need. Not things, not position, not for him to calm your storm, but for him to come into your life. Oh, glory be to God. Somebody praise the Lord in the house. Oh, praise God. Praise God. So the disciples were called by Jesus. And he told them to go into a ship. Go over yonder. And all of them went in, but Jesus was not there with them. And he said, go out, sail out yonder. And when they were a couple hours out on the sea, a storm arose. The Bible said it was rough, boisterous. My God, and notice when it was getting dark, that's when they went out. So that by the time the hours had passed, they were out at sea in the dark. The winds were contrary. The waves were bashing at the ship. And it was going to and fro. And all of a sudden, everybody recognized that we are in a serious predicament. Because as they rode and they rode, after a while, they were going nowhere because the winds were contrary. And then they look around, I'm sure, and they were asking, but where is Jesus? Him send we out here. And he's not here because the Bible said after he sent them off, he himself went into a mountain to pray. He pulled himself away from them. Sometimes you are going through something, saints of God. Oh my God, don't worry too much. You know, sometimes Jesus just pulled back, you know. He has his reason. He has his way of doing things. He pulls back and so in your sickness, you say, where is God? He's very much there. In your situation, you say, where is God? But he has pulled back for a while. He's in a mountainside doing what he's doing, but it doesn't mean that he's not watching over your situation. Oh, praise be to God. So the disciples were out there to and fro, rocking and rowing. And it was getting worse and worse. And the scriptures tells us that the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with the waves because the wind was contrary. Imagine, picture a boat, a little ship, way out in the deep. Picture that ship in the darkness, if you know darkness and you go at sea at night time and there is no light, it's really dark out there. And then in the midst of that darkness, picture the raging wind and the waters hitting at the ship and coming into the ship and it's rocking and they're running over this side, and then it tilts again, and they're over this side. And as they go to and fro, the waters are coming in, and they were frightened. And when they, I'm sure, they said, where is Jesus? And he just didn't turn up. And they were still going to and fro, and the water was coming in. And I'm sure they must have reached the point where they said, behold, now we perish. It was at that point when they were at the end of the rope. It was at that point where it would seem that it was the last straw. It was the last mile. It was the last bit of strength to keep it up for the last moment. And when they saw that it was all over, when they saw that it was done, when they thought that the ship would have capsized, 
when they saw that their lives were gone, the Bible said that they looked out. And in the fourth watch of the night, that's between 3 a.m. to about 6 a.m. Now, 3 o'clock in the morning is a dark time. You ever hear the saying, the darkest part of the night is just before dawn? There is some truth to it, you know. Because it is in the fourth watch of the night, between 3 o'clock and 6 o'clock, the darkest part, just before the dawn starts to break, all of a sudden, when it seemed as if all hopes were gone, all of a sudden they looked out in the not too distant past. And who did they see coming to a sh the ship? They said, hold on, friend, brethren, look, seeing somebody coming, but it can't pull. Because the person that we see coming was walking on the water. They saw somebody walking on the water. That was not possible. That was impossible. And they said, no, it must be a ghost. It looked like Jesus. It looks like the one that we love, but it cannot be because a man can't walk on water. And they were thinking that it was a ghost. Can you imagine sometimes we are at the end of our ropes and then we see something coming that we think is the answer. And when it comes nearer, it seemed to make the problem get worse. Because here they were thinking that in the midst of all of their situation, a ghost now turn up. That makes matters worse. A ghost turn up. Bad enough that the ship is about to sink. Bad enough that the waters are beating upon the ship. Bad enough that the winds are rocking and tearing the oars and everything apart. But now in the midst of it we saw, and it's not another boat coming. It was a man walking. It was a ghost. And so... Just imagine their predicament. But then as Jesus drew near, he opened his mouth. He said, don't be afraid. It is I. I don't care how far at sea you are. I don't care how far at sea you are. I don't care how dark your situation is. I don't care how much of how the wind is beating upon your life and the waves are rocking you to and fro. I don't care. You might think that your situation is such that nobody knows what you're going through. Nobody knows where you are. Nobody knows what is happening. I might not know. Brother Grizzle might not know. But Jesus knows. And I want to tell you, he knows where to find you. Amen. You might not understand, but if another boat was to go there searching for them, they would have had to have compass and other things to try to get proper positioning and to locate them. But Jesus, when he left land, he just walked on the water and went right over where, to where they was. He know how to find you. He knows where to find you, even in your darkest situation. Oh, can we praise the Lord? Can we praise the Lord? Don't think that where you are, you are alone and nobody cares. Jesus cares and he knows where and how to find you. Oh, praise God. But the other thing that he will do is not only find you, he will calm you. He's going to calm you. He said, look, don't be troubled. It is I. You know what that mean? Calm yourself, man. Settle down, man. See me turn up. Hold your peace. Hold your peace. The wind, understand this, you know. The wind was still blowing. The waves were still raging. The night was still dark. And Jesus said, it is I, be not afraid. You don't understand what is happening here. When he came to the ship near to them, he calmed them on the inside first.
You didn't hear me. He calmed them on the inside first. Because when he said, it is I, be not afraid. And let me tell you how you know that they were calm. One of them said, look here, if it's you, bid me come. And Jesus said, come. And the man now who was frightened a few moments ago and was sure that he was going to die, him just put him foot over the side of the ship and just bail off and just stand up in the water. The same water that caused him to be afraid a few moments before. Him just bail off over the side of the ship and stand up on the water. And when him goes up, it was like solid ground because he was calm on the inside. And the God of glory that was there with him said to him, come. And so although the waves were dashing still and although the winds were blowing still because they were calm on the inside they could deal with the storm oh can we praise the lord you worried and saying god change my situation god stop the wind from blowing that's not what you want you want him to calm the storm in your heart leave the winds outside for a while god has his time god has his way he'll take care of the external circumstances but he did first the miracle of calming them on the inside what you need right now is a touch of God it's not for God to touch your situation it's for God to touch your life oh can we praise the Lord can we praise the Lord you're in the house right now you're going through you're going through you think that nobody cares you think that God has forgotten you God has not forgotten you but he needs you to make a decision he needs you to call upon him he needs you to make mention of some great things about him. And if you are here today, I want you to know that you need Jesus in your life. And he will then take care of your situation. Saints of God, praise the Lord. Oh, can we praise the Lord? Now, there is something that we often overlook when we read the scripture very important when Jesus said be not afraid it is I it is I you know what he was saying I remember in the book of St. John chapter 8 he was there contending with some Jews oh praise the Lord and they were going through their discourse and Jesus said to them, your father, Abraham, rejoiced to see my day. And he saw it and was glad. And they said, ha, 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 you're not even 50 years old. And you're talking about Abraham saw your day. And Jesus said, hold on. Before Abraham was, I am. You know what I mean? It means I am the self-existent one. I am who I am. I am that I am. I am the self-existent one. I am the self-determining one. I have no beginning, no end. I can do all things. I change not. I can be what you want me to be. If you're hungry, I can be your bread. If you're thirsty, I can be your water. If you need healing, I can be your healer. I am means is everything. You see, I can tell you who I am. I am a mixture of the genes of my mother and my father and this environment in which I grew up. Amen. A little of my mother is in me and a little of my father is in me. And the environment in which I grew up helped to shape me. Amen. Can we praise the Lord? But when you say, I am, there is no genes that God got from anybody. Because he had no mother. He had no father. There was no environment that made him God. Environment did not make him. He made the environment. Outside of him, there is no environment. Outside of him, there is no genes, no nothing. He is. He always was. There was never a time when he was not 
Who made God? Where did he come from? Don't even think about it. Self-existing, self-determining, no mother, no father, no beginning, no ending. This is who I am is. So when he went to the boat and he said, fear not, I am here. That was the Greek form of the Hebrew, I am that I am. So he was saying to Peter and to the rest of them, stop worrying for the great I am is here right now. I can stop the storm. I can fix the situation. I can make it right. I, I'm glad I know who the great I am is. He is the great I am. The everlasting father. The prince of peace. The great eternal wonder. Holy counselor. His name is Jesus. Oh, can you praise the Lord? Can we praise the Lord? So he said, be not afraid. It is I. Or I am he. And you see, when he said that, and he came a little nearer. My God, the Bible said when Jesus went into the ship, all of a sudden, the wind stopped blowing. All of a sudden, the water stopped beating. All of a sudden, Deal like him because it says immediately they were on the other side. What kind of God is this? What kind of situation is this? Let me tell you, when you're dealing with Jesus, the living God, understand that you're not dealing with a man. You're dealing with the almighty God. You're dealing with the one for whom there is nothing that is impossible. He can fix every situation. He can calm every storm. It is under his control. It is under his feet. I don't matter if they say, pack up your things and leave. Pack up and leave. Don't fight nobody. Don't throw no stone after nobody. And then come church. No, it better you come. Make them do you wrong and you come. But don't throw no stone. And mash up nobody's window and then come church and glorify God. It's not going to work. All your peace. Trust in God. Walk in humility and let God exalt and lift you up. Oh, praise the Lord. Oh, praise the Lord. When, this, when Jesus said, it is I, he was not in the ship as yet. He was still coming. And you know what he was doing? He was walking on the water. Did you know that the water and the wave was the biggest problem to those disciples at that time. That was their greatest fear. The darkness, the wind, and the wave. But what was Jesus doing? Walking on their problems. Walking on the things that they thought was going to kill them. You don't get the message. Jesus said, no matter how big you think your problem is, it's under my feet. No matter how dark the night, it's under my feet. I want you to understand, saint of God, it's under my feet. Don't worry, don't fret, it's under my feet. Pastor Grizzle, you're not feeling well, it's under his feet. Sister Marlene, you're trusting God, it's under his feet. There is nothing that he doesn't know. There is nothing that he doesn't understand. He knows about it. But he's walking on it. And he said, look at me, the great I am. Everything that you can conceive that I can do, I can do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Under his feet. What is your problem? Picture your biggest situation right now. A challenge in somebody. Seeing sinner. Because I want the sinners to understand. I want those who don't know God to understand that God loves you. Amen. There was a woman that was there that everybody else rejected. There was a woman that nobody wanted to associate themselves with she was a woman of the night and she was known in the communities nobody wanted to be her friend 
So when all the other ladies went to catch water, she had to be in a corner waiting for them to leave because she was embarrassed. She had to be waiting for them to leave before she went and get her water because she knew that she had a bad reputation. Nobody associate themselves with prostitutes and whores. Nobody wants to do that. So she went when everybody was gone. But what she did not know is that her situation was one that Jesus knew about it. He knew why she came at that time. He knew that she was going to be there at that time. So Jesus get up and said to his disciples, I must need go to Samaria because he knew that she was going to be there. Jesus knows your situation. He knows the well that you're going to be sitting on. He knows your everything about you, where you live, who you associate with, your friends, your enemies. He knows your mother, your father. He knows your grandchildren that is to come when they come. He knows everything about you. And so he must needs go to Samaria because the prostitute was going to be at the well when nobody else was there and he wanted to meet her alone. He wanted to meet her by herself. Our God is a personal God. He's not going to take your situation and throw it out and give it to CVM or TVJ or the Gleaner or the Observer, Brother Tyrone. He's not going to make nobody write about it. When he comes into your life, rest assured that it is between you and him. It is going to sit on the well with you and say, listen, do me this, do me that. He wants to have dialogue with you. He wants to have conversation with you. He wants to lift you up. He wants to turn you around. He wants to elevate you. Oh, can we praise the Lord? And so he must needs go to Samaria. And when he reached Samaria, who did he see sitting on the well? The prostitute lady. The reject from the society. The person that nobody would want to talk to. The person that everybody ostracized and put aside and leave out there. But Jesus has a penchant about him. He loves to get to people who others cast away. He's a God of the castaway. You have some men that just love to judge people. You have some men that just love to put aside folks and to elevate who they think must be elevated but God is a God of the poor and the poor in heart and when others put you aside God is going to come and sit on the well and say talk to me he'll pick you up when others throw you off and so he sat down and said lady what's your problem To cut a long story short, when Jesus touched her, when Jesus fixed it for her, she left her water pot and gone. She said, come see a man that told me all things that ever I did. Come see a man. That made it new on the inside for me. You call me prostitute, but as of now, call me a saint of God. You call me Obi a man, but as of now, call me a son of the Most High. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is the power of the great I am. I pray that God take that side. Even as I come down this side. Because there are some folks over there that ought to be at the altar. I pray that God move by his spirit over here. And capture some heart. There, there are some crying hearts right now. There are some troubled hearts right now. There are some hearts that are being 
broken because of relational problems. There are some hearts that are being broken because of family problem. There are some hearts that are being broken because of gang problem. You want to leave the gang and you can't leave because you're saying your truth already. But if you would but just come to God and say, let me join the armies of the living God. He will touch somebody else's mind. And when you walk out, they just say to you, go on and low you because the Holy Holy Ghost will make a difference. The God of gods will fix the situation and will make it right. You're in a situation with a gangster and you are in a relationship and you won't leave and you can't leave because the gang man say, no girl can't leave me. But I guarantee you, if you come to Jesus and you get up and go back to him and say, look here, it's not really another man per se, but it's Jesus. God going to touch his heart and him going to pack up your things and say, go and serve God. I declare that right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You shall not be harmed. Because the great I am is in the house. Is in the house. Is in the house. Somebody worship God. Somebody worship God. Because I feel a crying out today. I feel somebody reaching out after God right now. Somebody saying, I, I wish it was like that. I wish it was like that. I wish I could come to him and he fix it in my heart. And I want to declare in the house of the Lord today, under the anointing of the Spirit of God, the Holy Ghost, it is like that. Put your trust in him and you will never be ashamed. Oh, praise the Lord. Can I ask everybody to stand right now? Uh, there are some visitors in the house. There are some saints, but especially the visitors. You have come to a New Year's service. You have come to start the year right. Coming to church in itself will not do it for you. It is more than that. You must come. God bless you. I saw this lady coming even while I was going down. Oh, praise God. God bless you. And I know there are more. Come, altar workers. Come. Come, come, come. Don't look at anybody. Hallelujah. I know the feel, the pull of a crying soul. And there are some crying souls in the house this morning. Amen. Just come. Come to these altars. God is already here. Can't you feel his presence? He's already here. All you've got to do, oh God, is open up here. God bless this other lady as she comes. God bless this lady. Come on. We open the altars right now. We ask, come on workers, come on altar workers. Ushers, come. We need to pull these benches back. We need to make room at these altars right now. God is about to move. God is about to do his thing. God is about to fix some souls. God is about to make it right in the heart of some men. God is about to establish himself in the lives of men and women. Amen. We ask you to come. We ask you to come. We ask you to come. Praise God. Make way for them. They are coming. Amen. Amen. Yes. God is already here. Come on, we sing. Come on, we sing. Hallelujah. Amen. Push the benches back. That's right. That's right. There's some room over this side. There's some room to my left and right in the middle. Come on now. Make way and come. Make way and come. Don't look at anybody. Come, come, come. Just cry excuse and come. Cry excuse and come. Where are the singers? Where are the singers? Cry excuse and come. Come to these altars right now. Every individual that is at these altars must have a saint praying with them. Lay your hands and pray. Pray with them. Pray for them. 
Come on, come on, come on. Amen. God is already here. Come on, can we sing? Oh, God is already here. Can't you see? Yes, come on, come on. He's already here. That's right, come on, come on. Come to him, come to him, come to him. Come to him. Come to him. God bless those who are still coming. Make your way. Say excuse and come. Space is at the front. Space is at the front. God is already here. again I just want to make a final appeal you are here today and you have not yet accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior in that you have not yet repented of your sins you have not been baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of those sins and you have not yet received the infilling of the Holy Spirit I just want to invite you to come one final appeal. You're, you're not saved. And the Lord is tugging at your heart right now. And he's saying, just take that step forward. I'm inviting you to come. And we want to invite a couple more of our saints to come up. There are still persons here that need someone to pray with them. Let me invite some of the male saints to come forward. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Let us just pray right now. Father, we thank you this afternoon for your love. And we thank you, God, for what you are about to do at this altar. Lord Jesus, you see those who have stepped forward, Lord. Lord, you see the situation in their lives right now, God. And you see the most urgent one, God, the need of salvation. Father, we put them before you. Lord Jesus, we pray right now that you will intervene and that God you will set their spirits at rest. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ that despite what is happening in their life Jesus, that you will make a change God. That God you will cause them to pull out every stop right now God and just to have them minds focused upon you. Father right now Jesus Christ you see the adversary God uh, he's still tugging at the hearts of those uh, in the pews, Lord. But we pray, Jesus, that they will give in to your voice. Hallelujah. And just take that step to come. We pray, God, for every heart today, Jesus. Lord God, that you will grant a spirit of repentance. That you will grant a breakthrough, Jesus. That you will grant deliverance, God, according to your power and according to your glory. Take full control of this altar service. Lord, we commit it into your hands. And we pray that you will pour your spirit as you had promised in the last days that you would pour up your spirit upon all flesh. Lord, let your perfect will be accomplished right now, we ask. In Jesus' name. You deserve the glory and all the honor. So we lift our hands in worship as we praise your holy name. You deserve the glory and all the honor. And so we lift our hands in worship as we praise your holy name.
Hallelujah. Can we lift our hands all over this building? You are God alone. Come on, lift your hands all over this place. Hallelujah. And just begin to worship. Hallelujah. The never changing God. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 What a sweet presence of the Lord. Come on. Worship him. Give him glory. Give him glory. Come on. Somebody's going to receive their breakthrough here. Come on. This morning. Come on. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 The Holy God. Hallelujah. The Holy God. Hallelujah. The Holy God. Hallelujah. Jesus. Jesus. We worship you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. Jesus. We worship you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. Hallelujah. We're going to keep the worship going. Hallelujah. Jesus. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There is power yes. in the name of Jesus. There is power. There is power. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, worship him, worship him. Hallelujah. There is power. Come on, somebody needs a salvation. Somebody needs deliverance here right now. Hallelujah. Jesus. Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, sing it, sing it. There's power. There is power in the name Break through. Break every 
Break every chain, break every chain. 